So I'm going to cover a couple of important things, which I think you should know. One is creating, creating Fluxus and Manus. How does that work? And the second is, how does it fit in a Spring Boot application? So we're going to take a simple Spring Boot application and build a reactive API where we're going to create a Flux and return that. We're going to create a Mono and return that so that you can see this in action. Okay. There's a lot more involved there. For example, some things that uh, you should explore is, you know, of course, look at all the operators, right? There are a bunch of operators which are very commonly used. Uh, I covered a lot of them. So there is a zip operator, which is super useful. Like when you have two um, fluxes and you want to make sure that you run something when both of them complete, then you use the zip operator. And then what you get back is uh, zip width. So you say flux one dot zip width flux two, and you're going to get back this combination of two items, right? You can get a, you know, what's referred to as a tuple. And then you can say, I want the first item and the second item, and I want to do something with it. So you can combine multiple fluxes that way, right? So lots of different uh, things for you to explore. I'm, I cannot go all the way there. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, scope it down and teach you some really important stuff and leave it, leave the rest as exercise to the reader, or the viewer in this case. So I want to start out by showing how all these fluxes were made. So we played with a bunch of fluxes, right? Fluxes and monos. We had the reactive sources giving us the flux. So how did I create those fluxes? Let's we'll start with the, the very basic one. Okay. So you have string number flux. Okay. This is basically flux dot just. Okay. Flux is a class that I import from Reactor Core Publisher Flux. Okay. So all I need to do is flux dot just and then give it a bunch of items and it is going to basically just create a flux with those items. Okay. Let me demonstrate that. I'm going to go over here. I'm gonna just going to create it play with flux. And then I'm going to have a public static void main. Here I'm going to do flux dot just off one comma two comma three. Okay. And then I do a subscribe. Okay. This is basically going to just create a flux with those items, right? You see this one, two, and three. Okay. It just gets it right there. That's a very simple way of doing a flux. So uh, there are a bunch of different mechanisms for doing this. This is not asynchronous, by the way. It's just synchronous. It happens at the same time. And again, we talked about how it really doesn't affect the programming model. Whether what's happening here is synchronous or asynchronous really depends on the source of the flux. Here, my source of the flux happened to be synchronous, but you don't care. All you're doing is following the same programming model. You can very well do this for something which does take a while and which is what I did over here, right? In my reactive sources, what I did was I did delay elements because I wanted you to get a feel for items arriving over time. So I didn't want it to be exactly like a stream, right? Otherwise, uh, people who are who I teach go like, what's the difference, right? They don't see the difference. So this is the reason why I do this. So you know that there is a, you know, it, it comes over time and there is a delay to it. So this is dot delay elements is another operator on a flux, right? Only this one was a creation of the flux. The first part is the creation of the flux. This one, the selected item gives me a flux, but then on top of this is just another operator. So delay elements delays every element by one second. Okay. So those delays get added. So one gets delayed by one second, two gets delayed by one second from one. So it's totally two seconds and so on, right? So it basically puts these elements one after another. So these are operators on this thing. Again, notice what I'm returning here is a flux. Okay. If I were to just do this, nothing is going to happen. Okay. If I do this, nothing is going to happen because I have put people in the assembly line, I haven't triggered the power button. I need to do a dot subscribe for it to actually initiate the action. But here I'm not doing the subscribe here. All I'm doing is I'm returning this flux. Somebody else is going to press that power button, right? I'm returning this to somebody else and they're going to call the subscribe on top of the call to this method. So they're going to call the subscribe on top of the flux returned by the delay elements. Okay. Hope that makes sense. I uh, have 
Another way of creating a flux, which is the int number flux, what I do here is I do a range, okay? This is another way of creating a flux, which is a range of numbers from one to 10. Again, doing delay elements so that it gets staggered, but otherwise this is also something that just happens right away, right? It doesn't block. It doesn't get spread over time. This is what results in it being spread over time. This one is a number flux with an exception, okay? So what I'm doing here, what triggers an exception? You must be wondering like, how does an exception even happen? Well, you can throw a runtime exception in your flux chain, okay? In, in your operator chain, anytime in your operator, be it a delay elements or a map or whatever else or a filter, you can throw and that is going to result in a flux itself emitting an error. Okay, so you don't have to do anything special for saying, hey, this is a flux error as opposed to this is a Java error. This is something that I love about this design, by the way. It's like, you're just working on code. You're just operating on things like, you know, a you know, map or a filter or whatever. And you don't, you see something went wrong, you just throw. And there are people who are processing the flux. They have ways of handling it. They have do on error or something like that. And it is going to work seamlessly. So you can use this for, throwing on your own, or if you are calling existing services here, which throw, it's going to work just as well. Okay. So which is, which is awesome. So here, what I'm doing is I'm throwing if it is five and if not, I just return E. Okay. So this is a flux for numbers with exception. This is a mono. Okay. So the mono is also has a just, but here I can't pass a list because mono is just one element. So I can only pass one element to mono dot just. And this is going to give me a mono, okay? And uh, this is a user flux. Again, I'm doing flux start just, and I'm creating a bunch of users here using the constructor and the user class, and then again, calling delay elements for the effect. Mono dot just of user, again, one user. Unresponsive flux. So here is something that you wouldn't typically use. This is useful for simulating situations like this. So there is a flux start never, okay? Flux.never and mono.never give you a flux and a mono, respectively, which never complete, okay? It doesn't issue a, an element. It doesn't issue a completion event. doesn't issue an error. It just, it's an infinite flux or an infinite mono. Inf it takes infinite time. So this was useful for us to try out a few things, right? We tried the timeout thing because this would never end. When this is, again, you don't use a not never. What instead happens is, you're making a REST API call and that is, you know, it returns a mono and then that API is down and it never returns, okay? So you're gonna have to handle the timeout that way. So you can practice handling that by working on flux.never or mono.never because they exhibit that same behavior. They get you a mono, right? Legitimate mono, but it never fires. No event comes, no error comes, no completion comes, nothing, right? So this is a use case for it, flux.never and mono.never. This is fairly simple in numbers, flux with repeat, basically a bunch of numbers that are repeated. That's about it. Okay, so this is how I did it. This is how you create fluxes and monos, and this is how you use it in your in your code. You can put this in any of your code and you have a flux or a mono to play with. And you can you can use this to try out different operators and things like that. Okay.